So next up, I'm going to join my Megan Clarkin. Um, Megan is the CEO of Critio. Uh, she joined Critio in 2019 in order to lead their transformation from sort of a single product retargeting business to a multi-product uh, commerce media platform. Uh, if you don't know Megan, she's a force when it comes to transformations. So uh, prior to Critio, she had a 15-year run at Nielsen, uh, most recently as the chief commercial officer. She helped lead uh, their measurement business into the digital age. Uh, she's also been a transformation in the workplace, uh, champion for a lot of things she's done around diversity uh, and inclusion, uh, including being named on the Heroes Top 100 Women Executives list, uh, both in 2020 and 2021. Uh, and she even started her career uh, as in a transformation uh, from an Olympic level athlete into a, a business and tech executive. Uh, so without further ado, Megan, please come up. Thanks. Perfect. So. I, you know, where I want to start here is uh, you joined in the end of 2019 uh, at Critio. So at that time, Critio had been on, uh, you know, the, the privacy changes at, at uh, ITP and Safari came out a couple years before. The revenue had sort of flatlined. Uh, the equity markets that had been down from, a, you know, 70% over three years. Uh, and, and uh, you know, Everything looked challenging. So I guess my first question is just why? Like, wh why join Critio? What, what did you see there? I love a bit of punishment. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, it was challenging. But um, uh, so what happened was they were the best and still are the best retargeting company on the planet, yeah. like without a doubt. And they hit the ITP challenge in 2017 and they started coughing. <laughs> And there was no strategy and no plan to get past this. Um, and even worse, the cliff was coming, which was uh, Chrome um, uh, issues that Sean talked about before. So, um, so I saw past that, and uh, what I saw was a company that had tech to do targeting, best tech on the planet to do targeting, machine learning coming out of everywhere. Um, they had 22,000 clients. <laughs> That's a great place to start. They had a reach of about between 600 and 700 million daily active users. They saw $1 trillion of e-commerce activity running through their pipes. And they had bought a little company called Hook Logic, so they were starting to get into the retail media space. So if you follow the signs, you look to that and say, wow, <laughs> actually that is prime opportunity. And so for me, it was about coming in and putting a plan in place and, uh, and transforming the company from a single point solution that was struggling mm -hmm. to a multi-platform that was going to address the commerce media opportunity for the open internet. And that's the eye on the prize. The rest is history. Gotcha. So let's talk about, about that plan and some of these transformations. So the first one is, is on the data and identity side. You know, I think Critio was known at that time as mostly using third-party data, very reliant on cookies, which is why they were so concerned about ITP. Since then, if you, if you read your latest reports, you guys are touting a very robust first-party data platform. Uh, I think you're connecting to 60% of your audience without cookies. And correct me if I'm wrong on any of those. Um, how did that transformation take place? What, what were the steps that were needed to, to get there? Well, the data was all there. So I think Sean articulated, he, he gave the recipe before. <laughs> you take these things, you put them together with AI, and you've got a data set which you can use. So it's not about identity, it's about the signals that you can get, the amount of first party data, the URLs that you can collect from that amount of reach that you've got to pull together a story around audiences and use that to take, uh, to take the place of what was there before. Because, you know, like, like Sean, I believe that um, you know, Google will do what Google does, mm -hmm. and that, that's, that's that story over there. For us, it's about seeing past that and using the assets that we have to transform ourselves away from the reliance on third-party signals that we never have to rely on them again. And we have all of those assets to do it. What more is in the commerce media story, there's a need for both publishers, media owners, retailers that are becoming media owners in that environment, and brands to start to share. Yep. And the more you can give them reason and purpose to share, the more access you have to first party data. So it's a momentum that you build up over time. And that's evolution. That's what we'll evolve to. Yeah, gotcha. So uh, speaking of evolution and, and commerce media, you know, there's a ton of attention on retail media. 
you guys very publicly and very clearly state you're a commerce media platform. So from, from Critio's vantage point, what does that mean to you? Yeah, it's a bigger prize. Again, you, you talked about it earlier. Um, to us, commerce media is the big uh, headline, I guess. Yep. And retail media is the first part of it. Um, retail media responds to a retailer set of um, use cases. Uh, it goes from turning them into a media owner and everything that comes with that to all of the shopper marketing type use cases that they want to bring to their digital stores. Yep. <clears throat> and so our retail media business responds to that. But as you get outside of that, then you go into other verticals like travel, like auto, like finance, and they all have their own set of specific use cases that they also need you to respond to. And then you go beyond that, so really into the world of commerce media where it is about commerce everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's about being immersed in commerce. For every media that you see, there's some commerce element to it. And we look to, uh, we talk a lot about Roblox mm -hmm. um, in, um, in the metaverse where you're interacting with media, but there's a commerce element. There's commerce coming at you all the time, but it's in the context of what you're doing. And so we think that that's the broader pie here. And for us, retail media is a really nice way to get into that space. Got it. And today, uh, you're mostly in the retailer side, right? Of the 22,000 customers, and correct me if I'm wrong, more are, are, are tied to retail, and then it's expanding that out. The capabilities you guys already have is your launch off point. Yeah, I think the capabilities that we have into, that take us fair and square into commerce media goes beyond retailers yep. because the, of the 22,000 clients, again, there's auto, there's, there's uh, travel, there's all sorts that are still using retargeting because yep. retargeting is critical to uh, their strategies, but also going into targeting. We call that audience. They're basically buying. They're looking for to, to um, attract an audience, retain that audience, and convert that audience. And that doesn't need to be in the retail media space. That yep. can be in the broader, or is in the broader commerce media space. Gotcha. So uh, another change you made uh, was around agencies. So you know, I was looking back at, at transcripts and, and earnings reports, and before you joined, I could not find an example of anyone talking about agencies. Your first uh, earnings call, you brought up agencies. And since then, you've made a, a bunch of developments there. Uh, most recently, uh, brought on Brian Gleason as a CRO. Uh, who came from Group M, where he had a long career there. Uh, can you talk about the importance of agencies? Why was this so fundamental as a, as a transformation to the business? Oh, gosh, agencies are <laughs> so fundamental. I didn't know why we weren't playing nicely with agencies in the past. I just, I don't get it. But maybe it comes from sort of my Nielsen days of agencies just being critical to the ecosystem. Agencies need, um, they need to be able to find the right place for their brands to sell their advertising. So they need to get into commerce media, they need to get into retail media. And so they need a platform that can aggregate and bring those opportunities to them, make it seamless, effortless, um, cheap for them to do it, as opposed to the 10 or 12 platforms that they play with today. There's a really big um, you know, opportunity here for for, um, for agencies as they think about retail media and commerce media outside of the walled gardens. And that's what Critio brings to them, access to this massive reach of commerce op opportunities across the open internet. And I think that's um, you know, what, what Brian saw. He saw that there was, um, you know, there was this area here that was almost untouched, mm -hmm. that Critio uh, had a platform or has a platform that can give them access in one, in one go to the hundreds of retailers that we have access to who are, over time, getting more and more involved uh, in having a, a media presence um, through retail media. And Brian is here, actually. I'm staring at him over there. <laughs> and uh, it's just a pleasure to have him on board. He's, you know, he's bringing a different lens to the company. And um, uh, I think that there's, plenty, there's plenty more we can do with agencies. Yeah, and, and as Terry said to kick off the day here, I mean, agencies are the cockroaches, right? So they're always going to be around. You're not getting away from them. I didn't uh, say that. <laughs> <laughs> they will persist. Um, so uh, in this, so we talked a little bit about, uh, while well, I was on stage, about the hedge garden approach that many people are taking in the retail media space. So a lot of retailers uh, are not necessarily building wall gardens, right, but actually leveraging third parties. Yeah. You guys clearly work with lots of retailers. Um, how is that working? What does that look like from your vantage point around data, around execution, uh, you know, compared to what you did in the open web around retargeting? 
Well, it's, 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 it's something that they have to do because they're cat. Like, they just don't have the reach. So in order to attract the brands, they need to move them off to off-site. I think that's what you're referring to as off-site. And so they need to find reach off-site and who best to bring that to them but, um, but, but Critio. You know, it's similar to bricks and mortar, is they can't just rely on marketing or promo inside store, they have to do it in other, on other media properties. So we take that use case and we apply it to their digital stores. Um, it's, um, it's an important part of their strategy and it's something that we offer from day one, is gotcha. their ability to reach. I mean, we have relationships with over 5,000 um, publishers. And, you know, the open internet is the, for 78% of people, it's the first place they go to when they're exploring a, proper, a, a, a product or a service yep. before they make those purchase decisions. So why not, um, as a retailer, open yourself up to be able to work with your brand to bring them more? And, uh, and that more is the right audiences at the right place outside of your own wall garden. Yep. And... Um you know, obviously we just had a, a whole discussion about data and privacy. <laughs> how is that working? You know, if you're helping them get off, how are you guys working with them to protect their data uh, to use it responsibly uh, off platform? Well, we have our own, you know, uh, clean room environment. Um, so, you know, our data basically actually, uh, our, um, our chief product officer explained it quite nicely yesterday. He said, what we aim to do is take their data and add noise to it so that you can't, <laughs> you can't unpack the data, it's too noisy, and we do that uh, ourselves. Um, I think what's really important here is, um, is once you've got that sort of, you, you know, uh, nervousness out of the way, is how do you add to that data? So how do we bring Critio's data, Critio's ability to get to brands, um, our measurement of that, um, our ROI, our conversion measurement to that, seamlessly to connect on-prem to off-prem, mm -hmm. using that language. And then even better, omni-channel, back to the retail store itself. Because what retailers are looking for is this sort of closed loop simplicity and one provider who can just give them consistency all the way through that shopper journey and all the way through that product journey, that product cycle, across all of those different elements. Uh, and so for us, it's more about you know, taking the nervousness away. Once the spooks have gone, it's all about that you, you got to do it this way because yeah. this is the way in which you measure your business. Yep. So measurement is it was the next thing I want to talk about here. You're obviously very familiar with measurement. Uh, you 15 years at Nielsen. Um, what is the state of third-party measurement in commerce media? Obviously, the closed-loop attribution is such an important part of this. Uh, how much is it people, you know, grading their own homework or is there, you know, third-party ecosystem uh, for measuring the, these transactions and spend? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's funny, isn't it? Um, so in the closed loop environment, you're marking your own homework, but it's, it's sales, so it's yep. the cash register, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you gotta get it right somewhere. Um, Bots don't buy, uh, <laughs> buy sneakers. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Um, but it's really about uh, what you bring, the connections outside. So we talked about off-prem before. What you bring in terms of the reach, um, the brand safety, the viewability, all of the things that went with that, uh, to, the, to the walled garden, to the closed loop environment. Yep. If they tie nicely, if they're consistent, if they're, um, if they're sort of uh, um, understood, I guess, by the retailer, and they can follow that through, as I said before, to the actual store, this consistency uh, is what they're really looking for. It's not about marking their own home, homework. It's just making sure that every time they get a number, it's consistent. And so for a lot of those things, viewability, brand safety, there's policies around that. There's ways to be consistent about measuring those as compared to others. As long as they sort of have a single platform provider and not make it messy for themselves, it doesn't really matter whether it's a Nielsen or it's a Critio that's giving them that measurement as part of, um, as part of their, uh, their retail me media play. Gotcha. So I want to shift gears here. So uh, one of the things you announced at the end of last year uh, was your acquisition of iPon Web, uh, the largest acquisition uh, ever by Critio, or at least uh, since public company. Um, the, can you talk a little bit about what the strategy was that? Uh, you know, was the goal just to get the godfather of ad tech on team? <laughs> um, and, and what you guys are, are doing right now, I know there's you know, some ups and downs with what's, what's happening there. You know, iPon Web is just such a great find. Yeah. You know, if you look at you know, most DSPs 
or you know that sort of technology in the ad tech e ecosystem. You know, Dr. Boris has probably got some code in there <laughs> somewhere. He's just written the whole lot. So, um, so it was just such a great find. And what they have is uh, they have basically you know SSP and DSP capabilities. So they have this dumbbell approach, which is a tech that we needed to have, and pieces of it we had, but you know they just add um, the quality to it. Um, and when you have that, then you have integrations on the SSP side. You have access to first-party data for them from the publishers, and you have um, you have the integrations on the DSP side. You you have the ability to have a true ecosystem which stands up to, you know, not nearly as big, but stands up to what Google do, or stands up to what, what Facebook and Meta are doing, or Amazon are doing, because that's what they provide. Uh, and so for us, having that, it's sort of the base of how we um, pass and exchange advertising between the buy side and the sell side. Again, through one consistent method, through single integrations that provide yeah. consistent data. All of this is just critical to the platform that we're putting in place. And we can't wait to, uh, to, you know, to be able to announce where we are with that deal. Great. Um, yeah, the horizontality is, is a sort of a fascinating trend that's open, happening across. It, it makes a ton of sense on the commerce media side. Totally. Uh, to connect, to yeah. connect both ends. So uh, I want to shift a little bit to just you know, public company CEO. So you've been a public company CEO for about two and a half years now. Uh, one month in, I think, Google announced their, their comb cookie deprecation. Three months in, COVID happened. Uh, then you had a you know roaring stock market, a challenging stock market. You've sort of been through it all, um, and in the middle of that, you've actually transformed the business, right? You went from from stagnating growth to to uh, real growth. You shifted towards agencies. You shifted. I mean, a lot has happened. Uh, how have you kept a team motivated with all these other distractions going on, and, and sort of pushed them to to get through these transformations? Well, they believe, you know, we have uh, nearly 3,000 people here at Critio that just believe. They love what we're doing. Uh, they love the way we're doing it. We, you know, differentiate ourselves from everybody else. We take the noise away, get people focused, eye on the prize, focused on the story, believe the story and execute. I think, I think that's it. I think, um, I think if you put a plan in place, you get everybody rallied around it. You make it simple for people to understand um, I manage the shareholders, I manage the board, take all that noise away and just get people to execute and then as momentum happens, momentum drives momentum. Yep. Momentum drives momentum over and over and over again. And so we have a company now that's firing on every cylinder and um, we're yeah. off. Yeah, one thing I've noticed is that you guys have seemed to shift. If you look back, you know, the last few years before you joined, everything was a very defensive standpoint, and now you guys seem to be playing offense, and it's very exciting to watch. So thank you so much for joining me up here. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank